Hi and welcome to this Landbox CAD tutorial. My name is Sedra and today I'm going to show you how to measure your objects or entities in Landbox CAD. In order to do that, we can use the tool that is called Dimensions. I'm going to go through all these options one by one and I'm going to show you different ways in which we can use these options. So I'm going to start with this one. The first one is called the Parallel Dimension. As the name suggests, this option is used to insert dimensions parallel to lines or entities. So if I click on this option and follow the prompt, select the position of the dimension or the line to dimension, I'm just going to select a horizontal line here. So I'm just going to ignore the center of this line and click anywhere else. I'm going to click on the line and then click one more time to insert the dimension. Now if I want to know the length of this vertical line, as you can see that I'm already inside this command, I'm just going to click on this line and then if I click one more time here, I will be able to insert the length of this line. Now this line was horizontal and this line was vertical. What if I click on an angled line? Let's see what happens. So if I click on the line and then move my mouse and then click one more time, so we can say that this option that is called the parallel dimension can be used on horizontal, vertical or angled lines. Now if I move on to this next option that is called the y-axis dimension, if I click on this option and then follow the prompt that says select the position of the dimension or the line to dimension and if I click on this vertical line here, move my mouse and click one more time to insert the dimension you will be able to see that this dimension is showing me the length of this vertical line. What if I use this command on an angle line? Let's see. So if I click on this angle line and then move my mouse, can you see that? I can now see the vertical distance between the start of the line and the end of the line. So it doesn't matter if the line is angled, it is still showing me the vertical distance between the starting and the endpoints of this line. Now there is another way of inserting y-axis dimensions which is called the continuous dimension. So I'm just going to focus on this part of the drawing now. Now let's say that I want to know the distance between this point and this point or the length of this line and then I want to know the length of this line and then I need to know the distance between these two points and then I need to know the length of this line and I want to insert all these dimensions here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to follow the prompt that says select the position of the dimension. I'm going to click wherever I want the dimension to appear. And now I'm going to start clicking on the endpoints. So I'm just snapping on the endpoints. As you can see that this is the continuous dimension. And I can snap anywhere I want to. Now if I right click, I will be able to come out of this option and this dimension will be inserted. Now as you can see that these dimensions look cluttered, so I'm just going to double click on this dimension here and change the options of this dimension only. So I'm just going to double click and then I'm going to change the value style from here. I can change the value style to 3, click OK. And then I'm going to reduce the decimal places as well. I'm going to change the size of the terminator as well. Click OK. And now I'm going to press OK. Now as you can see, only the attributes of this dimension has changed and the other dimensions remain the same. That is because I only double click on this dimension. I can make the changes in this dimension also by just single clicking on it going to options and then clicking on dimension. Now if I select more than one dimensions, I will still be able to change the attributes or options of all these three dimensions by clicking options and then going to the dimensions option box. Now if I make any kind of changes, these changes will appear in these three dimensions. For example, if I reduce the decimal points here and click OK, see, so only these three dimensions have changed. If I want to change the default settings of the dimensions, I can go to options and then click on dimensions. But I'm going to make sure that none of the other dimensions that has been inserted already is selected. So if I click on this dimension and change the attributes or options from here, 
the dimensions that I'm going to insert in the future are going to have the new attributes. Now I'll show you one more interesting thing. If I double click on this dimension, I can actually add, delete or move a point in the dimension. So if I click here, you can see that I can actually add a point by clicking here and then right click. If I double click again on this dimension, I can actually delete a point by clicking here and then clicking again one more time. If I double click on it again, I can actually move a point. For example, I can just click on this point here and then move it here. So this ability of the dimensions to change themselves is something that is very handy. Now I'm going to show you how to insert the x-axis dimension. So I'm going to click on this option here and first I'm going to show you how to click on the line and then add the dimension which is very simple. Now if I want to insert this x-axis dimension on a slanting line, let's see what happens. So if I click on this line here, can you see that? If I click one more time, this dimension is going to be added and it's showing me the horizontal distance between this point and this point. So this kind of dimension is always going to show us the measurement along the x-axis. Now I'm going to show you how to insert the continuous dimension along the x-axis. So as we can see that we are already inside this command, I'm just going to zoom in on this part of the drawing and now I'm going to follow the prompt that says select the position of the dimension. So I'm just going to click here because I want the dimension to appear here and then I'm going to start clicking on the endpoints of these lines. and right click. So as you can see that the dimension has been added but this dimension doesn't look like this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click to come out of the option and then I'm just going to double click on this dimension, click on clone all and then click on this dimension. So I have made the attributes of this dimension exactly similar to this one. Now, as you can see that one of these dimensions is zero, it means that I have clicked on the same point twice. So I can change that by just double clicking on this dimension and selecting this option that is called the delete point option. And now I'm just going to click once on this line and that extra point is going to be deleted. Now I'm just going to right click to come out of that option. And if I double click on the dimension again, I'm going to show you something very interesting. Here, this gap is 5 millimeters, and if we check this option that says gap from dimension line and click OK, that gap is the gap of this line from the dimension. So as you can see that all these lines pointing the dimensions are 5 millimeters from the dimension. If I want to change it, I can just change it to 15 and click OK. And now all these lines are 15 millimeters from the dimension. Now if I double click on this dimension and change the length by clicking on modify length to 14,000 and click OK, you will see that the length of this line has changed with the dimension and also the lines that were connected to this line have also moved. So you can change the length of the lines by changing the dimensions. Now there is one more thing that I wanted to show you that is very interesting. If I double click on this dimension and click on modify equation, and if I name this equation as length, which is a variable, and click OK. Now if I double click on this dimension and go to modify equation as well, and if I give it a formula that is length divided by 2, and click OK. Now if I make changes to anything that is called the length, the length divided by 2 is going to update itself automatically. Now if I just double click on this one and click on modify length and change the length to 13,000 let's say and click OK. Did you see that? So the length divided by 2 changed itself automatically and that is exactly the half of the length which is 13,000. So you can also use these formulas in your drawings and this option is very handy when the length of the lines are dependent on each other. Now I'm just going to press Ctrl Z to move everything back in position. I'm going to use the next option that is called the angle dimension. You can calculate the angle between two lines by using this option 
or you can also calculate the angle of arcs. So I'm going to click on this option and follow the prompt. Select the position of the dimension or the arc. So let's say I want to know the angle between this line and this line here. I can click and I will be able to see that the angle between these two lines is 60.05 degrees. Now I can also use it on an arc. Since this option has already been selected, I'm just going to click on this arc and can you see that? So the angle of this arc is 103.96 degrees. I can also click on this arc here and it is going to show me the angle of this arc. So this is how we can use this option here. The distance and bearing is going to show us the distance and the bearing of any kind of line. For example, if I click on this line here, see? So this is the bearing and this is the length of this line. Now I'm going to calculate the diameter of a circle. So if I click on this option and follow the prompt that says locate the circle to dimension, I'm just going to click on this circle and that is going to insert the diameter of the circle. As you can see that it's too big, I can just double click and change the value style to 2 and then click OK and click OK again. So the size of the dimension has changed. Now I'm going to go to this next option that is called diameter with leader. So I'm just going to click on this option here and then I'm going to click on any upper side like for example this one. Click and now I'm going to click one more time and that is how I can add the diameter with a leader outside of the circle. Now I'm going to insert the radius of a circle so I'm just going to click on this circle here and I can actually calculate the radius of this arc. So I can click here and it is going to calculate the radius. I can also calculate the radius of this circle here. So if I click here, it is going to show me the radius of the circle. If I want the radius to appear outside of the circle with a leader, I'm going to click on this option and I'm just going to click here and then I'm going to click one more time. So this is going to add the radius outside of the circle. Now the last option here is used to move the dimension text. For example, if I click on this option and click on this text and move it anywhere I want, like for example here, the text will be moved under the arrow. I can also change the justification of dimensions. For example, if I double click on this dimension, I can go to value style and I can change the justification horizontal justification, vertical justification, and spacing. So I can change these values. For example, here, instead of bottom, I can make it center and then click OK and click OK. So the text of this dimension is going to be centered. So this is how you can use dimensions in your Landbox CAD drawing in order to measure your objects or entities. If there are any kind of questions, please feel free to email me or to comment on the video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching my video. You have a great day.